Hello. Today, we're talking about prestige. No, we're not talking about Call of Duty when you get to level 50 and then you start all over at level zero <laughs> and you go back through your levels again so that you can prestige and brag to all your friends that you're the coolest guy and they who has no idea how gun. guns work. Yeah. <laughs> we're talking about widespread respect and admiration felt for someone or something on the basis of a word I can't read from the internet, their achievements or quality. Today, on the Whiskey Entitled, is bourbon becoming more prestiged <laughs> than scotch? Yeah, right. Roll the credits. Credits intro. <laughs> All right. Credits, intro credits, roll credits, roll intro. Intro. Bro. It's intro. Come on. I don't know. I, I can't read. Oh, it, it is labeled there. Intro. Oh, I can't read. <laughs> cool. We've been doing this for how long? A year. <laughs> Welcome to season two. Yeah. Hey, Ooh, Pressman. Pressman. How's it going? Boom. Look at how quick that guy was. Um, so, yeah, we're going to be talking about um, if bourbon has jumped over the prestige of Koch. We will debate this, even though I might agree with you, but on certain aspects, I think uh, it might be a bit different. So uh -huh. since this is a whiskey show, drinking show, what's in your glass, my friend? Ooh, I need to see more chat. Um, in my glass is also the only bottle that I've purchased this week. Ooh, all right. So Steve just said what I said. I told you this isn't going to go well. Wilder Ironically, not a scotch, Wilderness Trail Rye. If you guys see this, yep. buy it and put it inside of your stomach. That good? Um. Yeah, I got to sit down with the owners, Jack Rose, when they came. Uh, Bill Thomas talked to them and got them to come here. So they actually launched in D.C. And uh, their bourbon, which looks in a bottle like this, but it's yellow, yeah. is good. But uh, I tried their rye first, fell in love, and then they let me try their bourbon, and I was like, meh. Yeah. So it was kind of cool. <laughs> Did you say about. meh to them, or are you just like – I said meh to – no. That's who you guys see on Instagram is I don't know. Maybe you're like, It's oh, sad. No, it's sad how blunt and candorous I can be in real life. Hi, Ben. But like, yeah, so so I told the owners, I was like, holy crap, this rye is amazing. So I've been looking yeah. for it for months. They said they were going to launch here, and I was like, holy crap, I need, 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 need it. Yeah. Never found it, never found it, never found it. Went to barbecue with some friends on Thursday and then walked into a store with terrible prices. Yeah. And on the shelf for a terrible price of $110, I was like, worth it. Really? Boom. 110 Heck yeah. Damn. So it's 110 there. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be an $80 bottle. Okay. And it's worth the 80 bucks because it's barrel proof. I think it says on here it's age, right? It's it's four? a four. It is Six. straight rye. Might be so, a four. And they they do make this themselves, so it's not like ooh, you know, we we distilled it. In, oh, it's three year old. Sorry, it's got a three. sticker on it. Oh, there it's got go. a really cool clear sticker. But yeah, so um, Marketing. bottle one two three two ten from yeah. this barrel. It's it's actually looks like an afterthought. It's this tiny little white sticker. <laughs> the guy's like, oh shit, we gotta put a label. It's like ooh, we gotta put age <laughs> on it. But yeah, yeah so these guys. Um, yeah, these guys do. So what they did is they were making mash bills for other brands. Yeah. And for a long time, they were doing all the sourcing of corn and rye for them. And then they're like, hey, why don't we just do this ourselves? And so they Smart. did. And that's what Wilderness Trail is. And uh, I mean, to start off with a release like this, they're only going to get better. And this is yeah. freaking phenomenal. Yeah. So not to sound like a total commercial, but good Lord. That's oh, there's good, a man. lot of garbage out there. You're not even you're you're drinking, drinking a garbage dry. Tell me about it. <laughs> what was in my glass is something that Wally was just like, nah, <laughs> crap. I'm drinking the Booker's Rye limited uh, limited edition um, batch one of one, um, and I actually thought it was pretty good. It's a lot of spice in the front. Um, it is that dill, but that dill kind of uh, subsides and then comes back, which is kind of weird. But overall, I like it. I'm not gonna say it's the best rye I've ever had, but I mean it was going for over three hundred dollars a bottle. Yeah, it was supposed to be the best. And well, it was three hundred dollars a bottle retail, and then it was like. Seven hundred dollars on the secondary, and then the prestige of this bottle. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> oh my gosh! So this thing is all right. I'm anyway, gonna break down. Wait, 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 wait. wait. I, okay. gonna... Oh, I got something else. I got something else. Um, I did get news today in my oh. email. I have some another bottle coming, but I'm not gonna say what it is yet. Um, but in the mail this week, I got this. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I, took a, I took a picture of it. So this, uh, the publishers didn't yell at me, but they're like, "Hey, it's not released for another two weeks." <laughs> I was like, I don't care. You send it to yeah. me. That's what I'm gonna do. Um, 
I want to try that. I think that, if, that one I you think said, if you're yeah. a bartender, I don't think you'll care about this. Mm -hmm. But I think if you're not a bartender, like me and you, like it shows you how to do smoking, blending, fat washing. It shows you how to do like the cool tricks you see where people are like drinking whiskey from them, a bone yeah, marrow. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. And the cool tricks where they're making the smoke and stuff. It's in this. Ooh. It's so good. And also, if you guys saw my post this week on Monday, I think it was yesterday. Or yesterday yeah. yeah. Whiskey um, better, right? Virginia Distillery. I talked to the I talked to the author. <laughs> we had a good conversation going yeah. back and forth. He also doesn't like Virginia Distillery's <laughs> offerings. <laughs> so he figured out how all to... or some. Remember, um, you like all... so he likes all of the uh, like Chardonnay cider the and then ones? a coffee one that they did. Right. So I'm in the same boat. I like the Chard. I like their cider the best. But their regular regular port cask. He was like, man, and I was like, same. So, yeah, so I have so, the uh, coffee release right here. So, chart cask. Oh, you sample. actually have some? Yeah. And I have the brewer's so, batch, too, that just got released. That's what this is. So, the recipe in here is based off of that. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah. Happy Taco Tuesday, but on a Friday. <laughs> uh, I got to talk to you later. Maybe I want to try and pick up one of those books and see how that is. Because I do Ooh. love fat washing. So, that's kind of my thing. My oh, friend. do you do that? Yeah, I do that. I, I do also, baking stuff. this came in the mail. So, somebody will be ordering that thing that I talked about. That oh. I need to order and sell. So. And then, so Fine. I picked up Limousine Mice, so I finally got mine. I haven't opened it yet. I'll crack it open soon. So excited to get try that. Maybe I'll open that in the show. And then... Tasty. Hey, um, Ben, Single Malt Alliance, um, dude. I don't know if I can show this, but I'm going to show it anyway. So I got two bottles of some Scotch Oaksy Society stuff. Oh, those so. are the new ones, right? Yeah. So um, I think should... the darkness uh, in the dark of the abyss just came out. That was on this week. This week's email. I yeah. don't know about this one. What was the other one called? Uh, mold tojaki and Belgian waffles. I guess tojaki is a Hungarian wine. No, that wasn't it. There were there were two other ones that were in with that. Yeah, in the, the dark of the abyss was one of them. Yeah, there were two other ones that were on that on the email this week for Scotch Malt Society. Yeah, so I got those uh, two. That's awesome. So and, they, and I did pay for them, so it's not like they gave it to me. Um, Same. but I'm, I'm excited to try these cause I'm more a fan of like the deep, dark and rich, like the Wait. purple colorway. This is like a oh. tan. No, that's the tan one. That's the sherry. That's the, okay. So they have a three pack that yeah. they're selling right now. That's the one I read about. That one sounds good. Yeah. So I was like, and I think he said that I might be one of the first to try it. So, oh, that sounds good. So I'm like, Ooh. but yeah. Oh, damn dude. It's all right. It happens. Hey, man, oh, sorry. I, I was in your like pack last still, week. My yeah. Shipping store closed. But um, and then press man. and then something press man. that will get hap uh, Wally happy. I got one of these. But yeah. Ooh! So I'm excited to try Ooh, that. The speed light doing work. Yeah. Um, you can see my picture tomorrow. I'll show you what you can do with that thing. Yeah. So on to the topic where Wally Ooh. thinks it's once. Oh wait, what? I have to agree with press man. So mm -hmm. Mictor's Brow Proof Rye is one of my favorite jams. It's so freaking good. I'm not a rye fan. So like when I talk about rye, like this one. This one reminds me of the Sour Mash from Michter's, but somehow in a rye. It's so freaking good. But, um, yeah, Michter's Barrel Proof Rye, so, so good. Oh, one of my favorites. It's got, like, a sweetness to it. Not as sweet as Pikesville, mm -hmm. but you don't always want, like, candy sweet. It's so good, though. Oh, my gosh, I'm such a rye weirdo. But, yeah, the mouthfeel on this thing is not as heavy as I wish it was. Oh, you made me want to look something up. So what yes. what is your argument for why bourbon so, is more pristine? So I don't say it's taking over. So I think we both agree that bourbon has not jumped over the Scotch prestige wagon, right? But with the one mention of Pappy, good or bad, people already know about it, right? So people already have a feeling, perception of like, Pappy is the bourbon. So I feel in that sense that once, I guess, either Pappy or Buffalo Trace Antique Collection and stuff get more let's say outward reaching compared to the u.s like i'm surprised if anyone can find a buffalo antique collection outside of the u.s like at all i mean they do get an allotment so it's like anything else but right it's not, they're gonna allot but it's not as crazy as what scotch's allotments to the u.s is we have to agree on uh, that you, you think so you think there's more have you ever if you've ever watched it on master of malt you can see they'll get like one or two bottles of pappy stuff and they'll get one or two of each of the the btac and They'll auction it off, or people but that's, will go nuts. But that's it, right? Like, you, but then here in, let's say, um, from McAllen anyway, there's a crap loads of higher end bottles here. Prestige. Are there? Bottles. Dude, I bet you can find a number six anywhere. No. Really? Some of the higher end bottles, like they just make rotations. 
they they really do just go around to stores one that idea. finally sell one and they just rotate. I really don't think they sell. I don't know. Without, I mean, we'd have to talk to a brand ambassador about it, but I'm pretty sure they don't sell question. like you're thinking. No, I'm, I'm not saying they sell. Stuff. I'm just saying that it's available if you want to spend that much money. I mean, anything's available if you want to. I mean, I can go get Batman 23 for $4,000 No, but right retail. Now. You would no. be able to, you, would, you don't no. think you'd buy a McAllen M for retail? No, retail right now. McAllen M you'll see on the shelf for $5,000. Retails, I can get it at Costco for 3500 when it's actually there. So retail's well, a lot lower. Well, Costco's, like Costco's a bit different, right? They do, they do retail's deals. Retail's like four, though. Okay, so you're paying extra that extra thousand is a lot. Yeah, but anyway, but that's how we're, yeah, we're talking. How we're talking about the price pricing. Anyway, so I feel as though that the name most, and to be honest, it's sad that I'm pinning bourbons onto one name, but it is Pappy, and where Pappy is, that's where everyone feels as though that's Hold on. the prestige. So you're it. you're building this entire argument on about bourbons prestige yeah. over 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 Scotch based on just Buffalo Trace. In, the freakiest, in theory, marketing company ever. It, it, it doesn't. It doesn't matter though. It doesn't. Prestige doesn't mean it's good or not. You have to agree on that. <laughs> All Am right. I right. Prestige. Come on. It doesn't mean it has to be good. It's, it's based on perception. Yeah. Correct. It's, it's not actually based on actual achievement based or based on or perception. Perception. My my problem with the Buffalo yeah, Chase one is like, I actually enjoy Pappy Twenty Three though. That's the problem. So yeah, but we're not talking. I think most of their other stuff is pretty garbage, the, actually. The key thing is like I'm not. We're not talking about like connoisseurs or people that are in the whiskey industry. It's like you mean it's, just by name. It's like, just by ooh, name. Ooh. It's like nope. it's like McAllen, for instance. Everyone knows McAllen, right? Everyone knows Glen Gooley. I don't know Glen Gooley. <laughs> it's an Archer <laughs> Joe, but like I, I. So if we go by average person. So, yeah. okay, so Steve just brought up a really good go point. That's what I'm talking about. So if we go by just average person who's not a regular drinker or aficionado, yeah. um, especially since we're talking about Americans because we're Americans, yeah, yeah. you're really not looking at, like, you're not looking at people to be like, oh, Pappy's. Most people in certain areas, I'll agree that Pappy Van Winkle is known, but you get outside of major cities and you find like weird things on shelves because people have no idea what it is. It doesn't carry the same prestige out mm -hmm. in the countryside. So you think McAllen does? Yeah. So you think a farmer is going to go and be like, I know what McAllen is. Oh yeah, I love the number six. Mm, like, come on. I you're, 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 you're making my number argument for me. Number six isn't fair because it's like, the, I mean, you're talking about like the Master Series collection. It's not Fine. the same. Give me, give me a prestigious bottle Even that you think price, everyone will know. If we're going just by MSRP, you're talking about like oh, no. you want, $200 I, bottle. No, so when I looked it up, um, like highest, basically high end bottles and resale value, you can't beat Scotch. Like the, the highest selling Scotch is yeah. like a million dollars. You just can't. So that prestige is already there. And I'm not saying Bourbon's jumped over the prestige of Scotch. I'm just saying that it's got legs to stand on when it comes to certain Scotches. But we all know that Scotch in the end is always going to run run over it. So and I just don't I, think it's going to okay, change. So the Pappy gets their name because of marketing, right? Well, I the don't think that they can even be stuff, compared but yeah, okay. because, because Virgin Oak, right, just the way it affects the whiskey isn't always good over time. And Pappy's has figured out a good formula, and Elijah Craig has not. Yeah. And scotch, your youngest scotches that you're going to buy on the shelf are, what, 10 years? You might find an yeah. 8 or 10 years somewhere. Yeah. Brooklady, you'll find 6, but it's peated, so they're trying to get that – not Brooklady specifically because it's unpeated, but, but like – You'll find Isla whiskeys that are trying to get people with the young age. Those mm -hmm. are the only times you see young scotches are when it's for Pete. Mm -hmm. Everyone else is selling 10 plus years old. Yes. Like scotch trumps bourbon in prestige right off the bat just based on the work that has to go into maintaining but, a barrel for 10 years but, before you ever touch it. But we're not talking about that. We're not talking about how the age is or how much the cost is. We're just talking about the prestige of the perception of the achievement no, no, and the no. quality of it, right? No, no, I, I get what you guys are saying. Like, it's not about the expense of the bottle. Yeah. I'm talking about perception. Like, there's a perception that scotch is more prestigious than bourbon because bourbon, we have this perception like it's an American guy's drink who's sitting on a porch drinking it made from corn. Gotcha. Because, okay, I'll give you that. You know, yeah, yeah. Rain makes corn, corn makes whiskey. We sing a country song about it. Yeah. But nobody's singing songs about scotch. Every time you see a scotch bottle in a video, it's tied to like some jazz or like some guy in the classical kill. music. Yeah. No, but and, and that, really? see, and that's the key thing, right? Like, if we're talking about as a whole, like scotch and bourbon, I I understand your argument. Like, the, to be honest, there's no argument. It's like it's the prestige of scotch as a whole is there. But when we talk about brandings and how certain things are, like I feel as though Pappy Van Winkle has transcended the bourbon brand, and it's actually it's it's hot. It's it's on its pedestal. So, okay, Does it okay, deserve okay. it? Yes or no? I 
that's for someone to judge but so you're saying okay so if you say prestige of specific brands everything changes because then okay if we go by prestige by brands what brands does america have that have prestige besides pappies i'll wait um uh, buffalo trace is probably well it, that's part of happy that's not part of pappy then you got the antique collection right so you got brands not, you're talking about brands that's whole, so that's that's, that's a company not, no, that's that, not the brand okay that's one all right, we'll throw all of Buffalo Trace into one pile because everybody knows bourbon drinkers here in America. When they're looking for Pappy, yep. they'll take any of those. Then, you, then you would you would try and step up with the Parker's Heritage stuff, and then maybe some of the the Parker's Heritage is like if you can find reserves. it on the shelf. There's one, and on Wild there. Turkey is literally swill. Uh, well, they're master. How quickly we go I will... from prestige? <laughs> to swill. I'll give you, I'll give you, so, I'll give you something to try. They're they're um they're seventeen year olds actually pretty good. No. And arguing the but? other side, I can do this with scotch all day. <laughs> have you ever heard of a little company called Brora? I actually have heard of Brora. Ladyburn? <laughs> no, I've heard of Ladyburn. You? Oh, get out. <laughs> have you ever heard of the McKellen? What's that? Even if you want to talk about just prestige, if you literally don't care about price and you don't care about E158 coloring, Dalmore. You want to talk about prestige? Ludicrous drinks Dalmore. You know why? Because Stefano Pileggi introduced him. <laughs> Then again, if yeah, it, to be honest, like yeah, it would it, I oh, wonder if Dalmore would question. beat would beat McAllen in prestige Rock. though. What? Dalmore versus McAllen in prestige, not in quality, not a, not a competition. McAllen, you think everybody so? knows it because Dalmore puts E one fifty A. That's like literally but, their crux. But, but to be honest, no one, unless you're uh, a Scotch drinker, you wouldn't care. Like unless if you're you a, care about, if you care about prestige, you care about. How it's made. Then again, to be honest, we can all lose here and just go to Cognac and then Louis Vitre and then we're all screwed. So the Louis Vitre is only okay though. But, You've got to be no, a Cognac fan. But uh, prestige alone, that shit. So sitting down with their brand ambassador and asking a few questions, they lost all my respect. But that's you, right? It's, like think about prestige though. Like that shit on a on a, no. How good so or how bad it is. Prestige is judged by how many rappers put it in their music videos. Absolutely, you're correct. Oh shit, correct. dude, Grey Goose is prestige. killing you on that one. <laughs> then absolutely then louis is killing it yeah. and freaking any cognac or Hen any yak or hennessy is killing it yeah, you know you might as well say hennessy's got prestige then we can't go by rappers we can't oh my gosh if we go just by pop culture we're gonna get into like a garbage fight well to be honest pop culture glenn fiddick's pretty high in there too look at what elon musk was drinking no but in pop culture glenn livet is above glenn fiddick and glenn fiddick is actually what glenn gooley is based on in archer that's a whole different issue <laughs> but yeah so anyway we, i think we can all have a consensus that the prestige of scotch is a lot higher and it's not going to jump over bourbon but that's just saying like where did this argument come from no, what was this idea the reason why is it's like it's interesting to see how for me personally uh, how hey. bourbon for me anyway is getting to a point where it's becoming more limited more high releases single batches and it's trying to steal what scotch trying to do with scotch does yeah Except the age isn't there. Like, you can't justify – some of these prices are well, impossible. Well, okay, so on that argument, with the ages and stuff, then why are Scotch companies all dropping their age now? Japanese companies are dropping their age. Everyone's dropping their age now. Japanese companies are doing it because low stocks. Scotch In companies, theory, some, we don't really know that. Some did it, and some are bringing it right back Yeah. because they realized the error of their ways. Or just because people didn't want to buy their shit anymore – even more so because they realize that, that that yeah. number even though it's not important is important yeah. and, and that's a hard part like i feel as <laughs> that of steve hey, how about this if you if you look back and if you think that the reason why scotch companies are doing it is just trying to save a bit of buck and then you think bourbon companies felt the same way do you think that's the reason why like everyone in the industry was like hey we're gonna drop ages I got something. Go Here, two it. things. Go One, Eric, wait to answer your question. I'm sad I didn't bring the bottle out here because I do have a bottle. Ron Burgundy drinks Great Odin's Raven. That is some trash whiskey. <laughs> two, the point you make about Johnny Walker Black. Absolutely. Now you remind me of what it was like to not drink whiskey. Prestige, outside of us, because we drink whiskey, yep. prestige is held by the one and only, the only scotch Blended for aficionados, Johnny, Johnny Walker Blue. Yeah, I can see that. Absolutely. I, start, I started with it. That's what I started with. Yeah. And I thought it was horrible, and I didn't drink whiskey for wow. over a year. I actually liked it. I was like, this tastes like tobacco and dirt. And the reason why I liked it is because I tried a lot of bourbons and stuff and tasted like shit compared to that. Yeah, there's a lot of garbage bourbon, but JWB, unless you can really sit down and appreciate it, 
like tasting the bottle a year later, I was like, okay, French vanilla ice then, cream. I, I, in that time, I had learned how to taste. I had, had hundreds of whiskeys. It was a very different experience. Then again, I had King George the Fifth. I think it was, or was it eight? Oh, all right. I had the, I had the well, the, back then it was 150 bucks a bottle. Oh, not oh yeah. No, when I bought my JWB, I got it at um, travel retail for 150 dollars. Yeah, I got I got I started getting my under 100, and then when I saw the prices of scotch going up, I was like, what the f? And then Hong Kong Airport JWB. had like a 150 dollar bottle of King George. So I bought that. Yeah, it'd have, been, it'd have been the time to pick it up. Great with ginger ale. What's great with ginger ale? Everything's great with ginger ale. Johnny Walker Blacks. We'll do the ginger ale. Johnny Walker Black 2049 is amazing neat. Just drink it neat. Oh, really? That's like the best. I, wish, I thought it was different. I need to, I need to just I buy more bottles. Different. It is different. It's 49% oh. proof. And I don't know. So there are a thousand times where I'm like, no, more alcohol does not always mean better taste. But when it comes to Johnny Walker Black, absolutely freaking literally. From 40% to 49%, that 9% is where all the fruit, like fruit flavor, all the amazing stuff in there, the hint of banana, everything is inside of that 9%. So let's toss it to the chat. Do you think Prestige is all about the marketing too? Or is it just the accolades that basically the bottles give? Because that's a pretty good argument, right? Like Steve's already said it, and I just wasted 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Because they're all done, because you wanted to make this garbage argument. It didn't make any I sense. Think it was, I, this is why I laughed at you. As soon as you said it, that's why I just started laughing. I was like, seriously. I was like, this is what's happening. I think it's fun. I think it's fun to argue about it just because of the fact that, hey, we get to talk about it. It's something interesting. It's something that one of our listeners thought it was pretty fun to talk about. Why not? Yeah, it's all right to talk about it. Just so everybody knows, <laughs> Charles literally texted me. I texted him. Let's do this. And I was like, I just sent back laughy laugh phases. And I was like, are you serious? I said three things. Like, he's like, you want to do bourbon? And I was like, yeah, that's like me trying to sell a Chevy. <laughs> and like, it's just going to be lies. Lots of lies. I thought it was freaking hilarious, too. I was like. What you did say that was interesting to me, what? though, that I didn't know is correct eric wait it is popular it's yeah. psychological it's not real um I, you did say that america has more distilleries than scotland and i was yeah. like i don't think that's true no, it is. america has 1600 distilleries operating right now and scotland has 130 yeah. i didn't know it was that low i thought it was much higher no it, and that's that's a key I thing like scotland's, scotland's tiny compared to like america. when i was when i was thinking about like the argument like what could i pay, place basically stand on right it was basically i can't stand on the the quality of it I can't stand on the money part of it. I can't stand on the years part of it. But the one thing key that we know is like the fact that there's that many distilleries there. Hopefully some of them will go past it. But sadly, I just don't feel, and this sucks, where I don't think American bourbons can get past that pappy. Like that, I think, is their ceiling. And I don't think that ceiling is going to go any higher. I think that there are ways to get past it. And I think that I don't think bourbons. Are ex- I think bourbon brands aren't experimenting enough to find the ways past it. Yeah. I do think there are ways past it. Well, and, super light chars, let it sit for a long time, find the right barrel. Well, or the, or and but then again, you're talking about batches, right? But you're, you're thinking about McAllen's and Glenfiddichs and Glenlivet oh, and stuff. Oh, they're consistent doing period. those high end, prestigious. There's a lot of science that goes into what they're doing. That's why. And then the other part is like Eric was saying, it's all about you know perception and stuff. When I open my Instagram feed, eighty percent of it is definitely Scotch, and it's just the amount of people that are drinking it and you notice like what a hundred something distilleries how many bottles of distilleries? there's more bottles of bourbon out there different types of bourbons or brands of bourbons than there are scotch but i see way more scotches out there and it just shows that either scotch uh, scotland is taking control of what our marketing sees and then the u.s is basically saying you can take that market share but we want to get the asia market we want to get the scandinavian market we want to get these markets instead and sell that cowboy appeal that american appeal or it's simpler than that or it's because they taste better flat out and there are a lot of american bourbons that are just straight trash well that's true i i agree but well just because you have more yeah. distillery just you have 10 times more distilleries doesn't mean you have 10 times better flavors it doesn't or mean 10 you times have, better anything you have 10 times better trash anything. too yeah no i agree yeah it just means you have 10 times more noise to get yeah. through to before you find something you like yeah but yeah no to be honest i think it's it's, it's just fun to talk about just because we all kind of agree on the same thing but trying to get more information about it i think it's pretty cool all right, to address Eric's point, here's a grenade for the conversation. What has more prestige, French wine, scotch, or bourbon? Here's what's up. Damn, man. So the same kind of pretension you get in French wines, I find in scotch. I don't find it in bourbon, generally speaking, generally. That finding it in scotch is the entire reason that scotch and sniff exists, because I was tired of all these people saying things, like in my feed today on Instagram, like, 
people, oh, the older the scotch, then it must be great. And like, oh, Jura comes from White and Mackay, the home of Dalmore, and it must be the greatest. And I feel bad for Craig Bridger. I really do. I didn't mean to trash his brand. I want to try that Believe too. me, because I know he works for them. But like, it wasn't good. It like everybody in the room didn't like it except for this is weird. The females did like it, and like two guys with really weird palettes liked it. Now my guy with super sense of, I have a buddy who has got like a super palette, and he was like, this is gar. He wouldn't even drink it. It was so bad. How would he? Know? But like he, he must have tasted so, it. So I don't. You can't. So the champagne only being made in Champagne, France. Uh, there aren't a lot there. of garbage single malt, so there are a few garbage cognac single malts, only and there cognac are a lot of really good, like Macallan Ten Fine Oak is absolutely garbage, but like Champagne can only be made in Champagne, France. So that's prestige based on location and rules, but that's the same thing for Scotch. Yeah, Scotch, Scotch but bourbon Scotch, has huh? the same rules. Bourbon's got even more strict rules than Scotch. You know, you at least Scotch you can finish stuff. it, yeah, yeah, types yeah. of barrels and stuff. Once you finish your three years, but. Yes, champagne's more champagne's more regulated. So is um cognac. Cognac is like yeah. super regulated. They have guys with keys. They'll literally arrest you if you're not making cognac properly in cognac. Yeah, like no, Armagnac does the same thing too. No, I, I agree. Like it, to be all honest, the old world true. stuff has way more prestige compared to the new stuff that's happening right now. It, yeah, that's, it that's, just doesn't mean it doesn't mean it tastes better. No, but I mean. For us, we're, I mean, we're obviously not a French wine show, and because we're not a wine show, we're not going to say that it's more prestigious. Yeah, Eric. Sure, people who are doing wine are going to be like, oh, this is very much more prestigious than the Scotch whiskey. It is no good. And then just be but like, then, yeah, right, then sure. we're going to go like Actually. sake and shit. Like, that's probably been way before them. Hey. Right. So, so, yeah. Or soju for you. Bro- yeah, soju. The number one sold alcohol in the world. Soju. Yeah. Korea. <laughs> Korea. By the way, dude, cool stories with that man. Love that soju. That shit's awesome. <laughs> So she is yeah. good. But yeah, no, like, and that, that, I think the reason why I really want to talk about this because, like, we both slanted towards scotch. Like, that, that that's kind of why I was like, why don't you do bourbon? But it's interesting to see, like, maybe 10 years down the road, 20 years down the road. I'm not going to say it's going to overtake it, but it's going to be nice to see the, the uptick, hopefully, in bourbons. Or at least, no, for me, it's or like American anything whiskeys. else. For me, it's like exactly what I'm doing with scotch. Like, the goal mm-hmm. is to. Explain to people what your palate is, yep. find other people's palates, and then show them the way of what, what you found. This works for my palate. This doesn't work for my palate. That's fantastic. Pepe Le Pew. That's, what, that's fantastic that's because be. if, if you if you can get other people to relate to your palate and then you can show them other things that you found that you like, yep. that means you have better chances for them to actually find things that they'll spend money on and like. Yep. That's important because there's nothing worse than spending $100 on a bottle and wanting to pour it or in more, a drain. Because that juror is or how much? More. Do not remind me. Six hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, Christian, so so the the craft bourbon stuff is like, it's great that they're doing these things, but the consistency is needs not to there. Be there. That, like it that has to so be much. there. Like I understand that you're gonna do one off, but don't make that one off your key brand. Don't make it oh it's gonna change every year and stuff like that. It's gonna like you have your core unless brand. You're yeah, unless you you have your core brand and then you do your special stuff. And that's Barrel did a good job of owning it. True. They were just like, we're just making a batch every year. We'll just call it barrel number X. Yep. And it was a good idea because MGP somebody said, yeah. in yeah, it's somebody in, in their team of people knew like, hey, we're not going to be able to make that kind of consistency. So let's let's do this. Yeah. No, like I love craft bourbon stuff because it's so different, so unique. But yeah. It like, can be. But like for me, it's it's consistency, man. I want to come back. Like I want to be able to go like what I go to is Scotch and be like, hey, it's a 12-year, 14-year. Like I know it's going to be very, very similar to it. If not, then someone's getting fired. So, like, I want that in bourbons, but at a higher level. I don't want to have just, like, my Jack Daniels, you know, my Maker's Mark and stuff like that. I want to have my maybe Maker's Mark 46 special whatever higher-end version of it or whatever. So That's the thing is, like, Jack Daniels knows it so well, and their, mm-hmm. their Rick House is being computer-controlled down to the temperature and everything being controlled, like, by computers, See, even yeah. the char time and everything else. To me, consistency, they do such – like I, I will always be amazed by them, and I will always love their single barrel because they're fantastic flavors. Yeah, they're single barrel, but like, that it can change, right? Their number seven they, is poo. If they made that single the barrel I've all the time, the same. Their, I've, I bought three bottles of their single barrel, and yeah. everyone tasted identical. Like they was it different batches or the same batch? Different batches, but That's the thing good. is, they're using computers to do everything, and when you control even the temperatures in the rickhouse, you leave nothing to chance. Which is a good thing. And I, I mean, you can still good. have. 
you can still have differences because the wood still is wood. Yeah. But you're taking the chances of there being freak. I don't gas know about. And you're essentially throwing it out. For American bourbon, wood is not just wood, though, man. Like, you, if you control the char and you control what type of wood you're getting, it's almost the same thing. You won't get that weird ass piece of wood that had like a. I can't agree really? only because when Buffalo Trace did that experiment where they were cutting different parts of a tree, the exact same tree, and they were getting different flavors. And that was just one tree. Okay, I'll give you I that. I mean, they, they did a... Like, well, different parts for, like, the roots really and then the... Mm. So yeah. must be... A, okay, maybe for another show. It's all the same wood, dude. It's the same. All right, guys, I know hopefully you didn't feel as though that we wasted your time, but it was just nice discussion, and that's what... We, we needed this topic. And that's what we needed to do. That's that's what Charles we wanted to do. Charles needed this topic. I need this topic because I need to get off my freaking list. <laughs> I needed a laugh. <laughs> it was a funny laugh. All right, let's put some bottles up and let's take some photos, my friend. All right, let's make sure I take the picture of the one that I can take a photo of. How good is that? Is that really that good? Oh, my gosh. You have no idea, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah. By the way, I, I – How often – so the, the thing about this bottle – so. I'm not a big fan of rice, but the thing about this bottle – so what's the mash bill on this? 33% corn, 56% rye, 11% malted barley. <laughs> Screw you, they, dude. I'm gonna double you double. Oh my gosh, they do it so good. Like, I, I don't know what they're doing right. It reminds me so much of Michter's. So, do you like Michter's sour mash? Uh, I gotta try it again, man. I wasn't a big fan. It didn't blow me so away. So their sour mash is my favorite of all the Michter's. Something in this reminds me of that sour mash, and it's just perfection to me. Ugh, so good. Right. I was so mad. You know how many of those there were on the shelf? I'll give you a hint. I bought all that there were because there's only one. Yeah. I was so mad. You have no idea how mad I would have bought three at least. <laughs> there would really? have been a hole in that pot. Oh, yeah. I bought three because this one, which I'm going to kill, mm -hmm. uh, second one that I would have opened to sip like a human, and a third one to save for the future. Yeah. Um, not a big fan of the toasted barrel for the rye, but the bourbon, you like the, the bourbon, right? Toasted barrel bourbon. The mixture's toasted bourbon? Yeah. The new one? The new one, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, the old one, impress, man. Uh, it didn't impress me. The new one, it's it's not like – I'm not going to go spend $200 on it like people are already doing on secondary. What? That's crazy. But if I pick it up for like 75 bucks, yeah, I'd grab it for 75 It's not bad. Oh, I got a shout-out too. Um, the Bomb for Guam. Thanks for the shirt, bro. Thank you. You got a shirt? Yeah. What? Send me a shirt. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. He's cool. I haven't talked to him in a while. Yeah. All right, guys. And Wally, what are we going to say, man? Thank you guys so much, by the way. And I apologize if this did not entertain you. Peace.